Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's no longer learn any more game theory. We are done. This is the wrap-up video for Game Theory 101. I should start out by thanking you and commending you for making it this far. At this point, you have stared at a screen and listened to my disembodied voice for hours, and that's more than most people did. So again, thank you for that, and I commend you on it. But really, Game Theory 101 is just an introductory class. It is the basics, as the 101 name describes. And in fact, you can think of Game Theory as though it were a tree, and Game Theory 101 are the roots and the trunk of that tree. So now that you know those sorts of things, those important elements, those vital components of the tree, you can go out and explore the branches, which may or may not be interrelated. But really, Game Theory 101 was all about establishing the fundamental parts. So now you can explore these really other interesting topics in Game Theory. For example, you could go out and learn about repeated games. This asks the question, what if we played The Prisoner's Dilemma over and over and over again? Well, as it turns out, we can actually develop cooperative strategies like that. You may have heard of Grim Trigger or Tit for Tat in your everyday life, and that's where this comes from, is from this repeated games literature. And it's really interesting stuff to learn about how repeated play can actually inspire cooperation when it seems like, at least at first, that these players are going to be doomed to do bad things to each other. And you also get a neat little result about Folk Theorem, which tells you exactly all the different sorts of equilibria you can get in these sorts of games. Repeated games, very interesting stuff. Perhaps even more important, though, than that is incomplete information. All along, we thought that these players in these games knew exactly each other's preferences, but it's very plausible that that isn't the case in real life. I might not know whether you want to do good things to me or you want to do evil things against me, and that being the case, that might affect how I'm going to play. And so you have an entire literature on that that deals with these incomplete information style games. You have two different solution concepts. You have Bayesian Nash equilibrium and perfect Bayesian equilibrium that handle those specific types of games. Incomplete information is really important stuff, really useful stuff, really smart stuff. I encourage you to go look at that. There are more applied instances of game theory. So for bargaining, bargaining is something that's huge, right? bargaining situation is just where two actors are bargaining over the price of a car when they're trying to go out and buy a car from a dealer and perhaps this could be an employer and an employee trying to negotiate the wage of a contract there are bargaining situations all over the place all around us and an important question is who's going to get the better deal and why right is the employer on better footing is the employee on better footing and how can that employee manipulate things how can actors manipulate the bargaining process to get better outcomes bargaining. Again, a nice, really interesting literature that you can now go out and explore because you have these fundamental foundations of game theory. For me personally, I think what the most interesting subject matter is, is international relations. I am really interested in why states fight wars against each other. That's what I do for my research, and I think that that is really cool and really neat because in every other model, things don't blow up. But in my models, we always have game trees and, and nodes of the game trees that end in explosions. And I think that's really cool. And it's a lot of fun and it's a lot of interesting stuff. So there are interesting topics there like wars and efficiency puzzle, preventative war and preemptive war. And that's the kind of stuff that I study. I have started an international relations class. You can find that all over the internet. It's called International Relations 101. Just search that and you'll find me. And I will be doing similar stuff with these th theoretical models in the realm of international relations. I've also written a book on it called Game Theory 101, The Rationality of War. You can check that out. Also, very interesting stuff, at least from my perspective. I think that you'll share my perspective if you've seen any of that subject matter as well. Now, lastly, another big literature is the literature on voting. And this is very timely because as I film this, it's only a few days before the election in the United States. This voting literature asks some pretty interesting questions, which may not th you may not think are that interesting up front, but then as you start reading these models, you'll take a step back and you realize, wait a minute, everything that I thought about voting is patently wrong. So this voting literature can ask about why people vote in the first place, how votes can be manipulated, and how candidates choose policies in competition with others and with voters in the background, trying to figure out how they're going to vote for these particular candidates. Really interesting stuff. You can check that out as well. And that is all I have. As a last little note, I do encourage you to go out and get Game Theory 101, the complete textbook, if you haven't. It has everything that we've covered in here, and it has a whole bunch more examples. And I actually do every single problem in that book and more problems than what you've seen in, this video, in these videos. And I do it step by step, line by line. And so if there's anything at all that was unclear to you in the first go around, if you go out and purchase the book and you read it, I'm sure that you'll get it when you when you go through it the second time. And of course, it's really, really cheap. So there's no reason not to do it. 
All right, that is it. Again, I thank you and I commend you for making it this far, and I hope to see you in a future class. Until then, take care, and don't forget to subscribe to me because I like to put up random videos of game theory whenever I can. All right, that's all I have. Bye now.